welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just going to do a quick unboxing. I've just bought two new reels. It's a sort of unboxing, but not an unboxing. Um, I have used them uh, twice for uh, the salt, and just once for this, but I always keep the boxes because, yeah, I've got a fetish for boxes. It's in the box, as they as I say. So, yeah, we've got here, we've got the Shakespeare Salt 70 reel. I'm going to have a look at, and we've also got the Shakespeare Salt 70, but uh, this is the surf model. So, what's the difference? Is there any difference? Um, <clears throat> a bit of a price difference. The Salt Surf is an extra £20 more. Um, there's a few more features on this one, and we'll go into them both. So, the first one we have a look at is the Shakespeare Salt spinning reel. This is the 70 version. And what it says on here is rugged salt water approved spinning reel, machined and anodized long cast balls, corrosion resistant side metal cover and rotor, oversized anti twist titanium line roller, double dog permanent anti reverse, four stain steel bearings, powerful disc drag, left or right hand wind. These, these wheels are built for the salt. And then on the side here, this uh, 070 version, line wise it will take 233 meters of 20 pound line or uh, 0 0.40 millimeter. So <clears throat> we'll do one at a time, so we'll open this one up. It's got the exploded diagram on the side of the box. If you ever needed to uh, <clears throat> get into it at some point, if there's any issues, but when you open it, <coughs> this one does come with two aluminium spools, and this one doesn't. This one comes with one aluminium spool and one carbon spool. But um, two aluminium spools. But also, I'll I'll, uh, I'll go and get the scales and weigh these, um, so we know. But this one in my hand just feels a hell of a lot heavier. I like the fact that it comes with two aluminium spools. I mean, I really like that. I mean, it's got really thick bait arms that you have to clunk over. So yeah, they, uh, it's got a real clunky, positive bait arm. But um, one thing I've noticed from coarse fishing and doing the new sort of pellet waggler, method feeder style of fishing, is a big improvement in line clips and one thing that Shakespeare, well not just Shakespeare but all sea fishing really should get on the ball and you know because you're using thick liner you can't get line underneath these tiny little V style line clips they're not really fit for purpose um, you want a nice big round hefty uh, line clip you can put the line behind one of the spring ones um, so it's one thing that, that could be sort of like developed a bit more on sea fishing wheels it's a, a good a good quality big round line clip you're not going to damage the line but um, these are you, you could probably get sort of like a 10 pound line under there at a push but when you pull it it's going to damage and kink the line that's why I use these are just hair bands, we use elastic bands but they just split after with obviously salt air and the sun and everything. But yeah this is such a smooth reel, it's, yes four ball bearings and it comes with an identical aluminium spool and, and so far you know I've got nothing bad to say about it, nothing bad at all. So let's have a look at the surf model. Pay a bit more for this, an extra £20. And as I said, it's just a bit disappointing. It comes with a carbon, spare carbon spool. I'd like two aluminium spools, or, or, or three. But it's a, long, a wider spool and it's a bit shallower. I mean this one you get 330, well, you don't get as much line on these as you do with these. So, what I've done is I've used these for my not 
like, I'm going to cast three into the 30 yards by a long way. I mean, probably the most that you're going to get from beach fishing is about 120 yards, 130 at a push, giving the wind and everything. So, I do use these for my distance casting, but the lighter ones I'll just use a, a simple up and over uh, one, one hook worm rig or my, generally what I'm using is no two up, one down flapper rigs. Um, but it doesn't leave a, a lot of extra line once you cast out, walk back to your rests and all the rest of it, you're genuinely close to your backing. So yeah, that, <clears throat> even though it's a long cast spool, just a little bit of deeper spool would have been ideal, just so you can get a little bit more line on it. But this reel is a lot lighter, and this is with the aluminium spool on there. Probably need to put a little bit more braid on this. Um, it's ideal for what I've been doing. I've been casting out and yes, yeah, plenty of braid, but I'll probably get another half an inch on there um, just to make casting a little bit easier, a little bit further out. But obviously the braid is a lot thinner, a lot, lot thinner, but about three or four times thinner per poundage breakage strain than it is to monofilament line. So, but this is coming in. At 630 grams, so yeah, whole whole 200 grams lighter. 630, 830. So yeah, 200 grams lighter, a quarter, a quarter. Again, so I mean, this is what you, you know. If you had the 50 or 60 version of this, you could quite happily use this for spinning for bass from the shore. And this one actually is eight ball bearings, so you're getting twice the amount of ball bearings. I'm going to go through the specifications on this one as well. But this one comes, yeah, with this side wind, which I'm not keen on, um, to tighten up the handle. Um, you know, sometimes when you've got cold hands, you tighten up really tight, it's a struggle to get undone. I can't, you know. Winding it forward till it locks, winding it back it seems good sympathy. It's got to really tighten this down. Sometimes I think simple is better with sea fishing and everything that can go around the wrong and the amount of pressure and the use it's getting. Just keep it simple. So have a look at the specifications on this. Again, this one says 320 meters. A 20 pound line but 0.35 millimeter so yeah it needs thinner line and about 10 meters less so you're not getting as much line on there this actually says it's 600 grams and probably that's probably taken into account not with the spool on which is a bit cheeky which is 21 ounces 21.2 ounces which is a lot of weight really when you're thinking you're trying to hold that in your hand all day long but 8 plus 1 ball bearings, anodized aluminium spool, anti-twist slime roller, so you're getting an anti-twist version with this. Smooth strong drag system, which is brilliant on this one. Large capacity surf style spool, salt water protection and corrosion resistant. One way clutch with instant anti-reverse, which again you're getting the instant anti-reverse on this. Aluminium handles and supplied with spare graphite spool. And it comes in the box. You're getting a little guarantee, the owner's manual, we all know how to use a wheel, <laughs> you turn the handle, it winds in line, and then you get the exploded diagram with all the bits and pieces on there, all the uh, part numbers. So again this, a lot, lot lighter reel, and just straight away it's just so smooth, so much smoother, it just got so much roll on it and the bay arm just doesn't feel as quite as clunky robust if you know what I mean it's smoother I mean it's definitely heavy enough for the job and it clicks over better but I just like the on air the clutch is a lot to only takes sort of like one full turn and it's almost there yeah, one full turn and it pretty much locked up to loose, which you know, in situations when you you want that sort of um, lock up, and then you get a 
you get a fish, you want to loosen it, you want that instant response, you know, it's a lot better, it's a lot better. You're not sort of constantly whining, whining, whining to find the, uh, to give it out line, to pay line. And as I was saying with the, uh, I'll take it back from Shakespeare, but um, I'll just see if I can get that out of the way. The line clip. There you go. Nice big round sprung aluminium line clip there. You know that's that's what I'd like to see on the other one. And you can see the difference in the in the spools really. Um, this is a lot shallower but deeper. And this one is just a lot lot wider. Obviously and, and when these are empty I noticed Ever so slightly cone shaped, so the line can peel off, and this one casts like a dream. And um, I'm hitting an extra 30 40 yards with this straight away out of the thing, um, and it's, it's a fantastic reel. I mean, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more comfortable to use. You know, only time will tell how long it lasts. Um, and, if I was going for durability and ruggedness and all the rest of it, I mean, this one just feels like your typical workhorse, your everyday today. Big, heavy, clunky diesel engines, chugger, 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 chugger away till the end of time, basically. Um, and just, just hold it in your hand. Is, <laughs> yeah, it's not the lightest of reels. But, you know. If you say if we're going to have a reel in 20 years time they'll probably be still ticking away in 20 years time you know as long as you clean them down when you get back a little bit of clean fresh water clean them down wipe them down if need be um, I just use a toothbrush get rid of any bits of sand um, and get some proper real grease and oil and give them a little service every time for just a couple of drops just you know you pay good money for them keeping them in good nick because the salt water, you know, if you don't take care of them, you might be paying good money for a good reel, but if you're not going to look after it, they're not going to last as long as they should. So, I mean, that's that's the reels. Um, I'll probably do an, an update after I've given them sort of like a dozen or so outings and see how they fare and if they still look uh, as nice as they do and if anything goes wrong, you know, touch what they don't, but yeah um first impressions and after you know i've used this one say two or three times i've used this one once or twice um first impressions so far so good um compared to what i was using before which were just cheap cheap sort of like under 20 pound meals um did the job but haven't lasted more than a year a year and a half so I thought I'd shell out a little bit more for these. I think this one was just shy under fifty pounds. It's got a half price sale on it or a deal on it, and and this one was about forty pounds. Um, but this this one should have been or had been retailing about seventy eight pounds. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to you and uh, after a dozen or so sh uh, sessions and see how they're still going. And I hope it helps. I hope you've enjoyed it. And there's plenty more fishing videos coming up shortly. And you know, I've just done one from Galston Pier Saturday. I, um, I'm hoping to get out to Corton Beach, uh, go Friday night or very early, um, and go down to Corton, Corton Beach just into Suffolk. That's fishing well. There's a lot of smooth hounds and rays coming out. But you know, I'm talking either so it's going to be either Corton or so I'm going to I'm going to go north because I haven't been north this year. Um, to you know, South House. I love South House. Um, there's a place up there up on the shingle. It's fantastic. You might even get the few mackerel signs to come in now if it's warming up. You know, fingers crossed. <coughs> or Cromer. <coughs> there's a few good reports coming from Cromer Pier. You know, someone on there, a couple of cod the other day. Some nice big smooth hounds, um, 
some flat, uh, flatties. Um, what else do they have? And a dog, uh, obviously dogfish, as you always get. But yeah, so I'm going to go a bit further afield this Saturday. When you, the days are sort of like broken this 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 week. I've, I've got a Saturday off, and then I've got the bank holiday Monday off. But yeah, there's going to be plenty more content coming, and then <clears throat> in the coming weeks, I've done my fair sh share of uh, beach fishing. I'm not going to stop it this uh, <clears throat> this winter, but I normally do that over the winter, through the winter, and then springtime, and normally sort of like when the weather gets nice, I'll start hitting the commercials, doing a bit of carp fishing, do a bit of a method feeder fishing, sort of like match style, and then pellet waggler fishing, pole fishing. And then when the river season starts again, I'll be back on the river, yeah, I'll get myself a season ticket. <clears throat> and then we get uh, the Great Yarmouth and Norwich uh, Angling Club ticket that covers from Boat Champ Arms all the way down through Langley up to sort of like Cantley. Um, you've got about 230 pegs all along there. Um, can be a bit push at the start of the season because there's a lot of matches, a lot of commercial matches and um, well not commercial, national matches that I should I say and club matches. So your best bet at the start of the season is trying to go midweek. Most weekends are booked out for the first couple of months because um, it's a very very busy, prolific uh, national and, and, and match venue. But yeah, you can go get there or anywhere on the broads really. There's so many places on the River Bure. Um, probably be getting the, I was talking about the other day, the NDNA ticket, which has got a lot more water this year, St. Bennett's Abbey on the view, and they've got, um, um, I think it's Wood Basswick, um, got Cold Harbour now, all of Cold Harbour, there used to be a couple of free spots on there, but, um, but now they've got all that match length to the left now. You used to have the boardings and to the right, but they've all, I think there's no no pleasure fishing there now, which sadly is coming to a lot of places. A few people go down there, set up the tents for a week, fires, the rest of it, do naughty stuff. and um, Just ruin it for everybody else, unfortunately. And But there's a lot, lot more water now on the NDA ticket. So I'll be getting that, I think that's again twenty, thirty pounds. Which you think for a year, for a whole year, compared to other sports, um, golfing, racing or whatever, thirty pounds for a year is nothing, you know, absolutely nothing. And for the amount of water you get and the amount of venues and pegs, I think it's brilliant value for money. Um so you, yeah, people complain there's not a lot of free fishing in Norfolk, and then there isn't now. And I'm saying, unfortunately, the few are spoiling it for the many. Um, but that's just the, that's the way it is. You've got to deal with it. And if you want to go fishing, pay the money. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that back on the rivers. Hopefully, when the rivers start, um, before it gets too hot, I'll be back on. The spinning for pike and perch and chop shot in. So there's plenty more bits and pieces to come. Plenty I've got planned. Um, <clears throat> I'll be taking when I go to the beach, my little gas stove, and hopefully we're doing a bit of a catch and cook up uh, on the beach, a bit of foraging. So yeah, I've got I've got plenty uh, plenty planned, plenty you know some more options, being a bit more diverse than what I do. And plenty more unboxing. Any questions, anything you want to ask, just let me know and I'll get back to you shortly. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was a help. Um, any questions, just feel free to ask and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.